Hello everyone, welcome to video 35 of chapter 3. This is the final video for convexity. So we will try to put all things together. We start the video with the, a theorem, theorem number 9. The theorem says, for the LP problem, a point in the feasible region is a vertex if and only if it's the basic feasible solution for some canonical form of the LP problem. So um, think about this theorem and think about um, what we have done to solve the LP problem, the simplex algorithm. We would rewrite it in standard form and then before we start the algorithm, we always put it in canonical form first, okay? And uh, this theorem tells you that if you manage to put it in canonical form and you have a basic feasible solution, and that is a vertex for the feasible region. And let's take a look at how we can prove this. Okay, so um, we will go through a proof to show that a feasible basic solution is a vertex. The converse is um, a bit too complicated for this course, and if you're interested, you can uh, read more literature on that. Okay, let's consider an LP problem in canonical form um, with solution. Let's call the solution x um, is b1, b2 to bm, and uh, all zeros. So these are the um, basic variable. These are the non-basic variables. In we follow the definition. Now let's take two other feasible solutions. We call them x tilde and x bar and we denote the elements with the indices as here, okay? They're both feasible solutions, and uh, we also have that x. This x here is the half value, the average of these two, so x tilde plus x bar divided by 2. So if we show now that x tilde and x bar cannot be distinct, then that means x must be a vertex. Okay, let's take a closer look at this equation, x equals that, and in particular, I'm going to look at the last n minus m elements, and namely those elements where x is zero. So this means that for every k bigger than m, I have the following, half of x tilde k plus x bar k is zero, okay, for every k. And then we also know this is a feasible solution, meaning x tilde k is bigger than zero, x bar k is bigger than equal to zero. So these two are two non-negative quantities, and they add up to be zero, and the only possible solution is that they are both zero. So this means that x tilde and x bar, they are both solutions with the, all the n minus m, the final many elements to be zero. So they must be the basic solution with the basic variables of x1, x2, and xn. And there's only one possibility that they are the same, they equal to x. Okay? So this completes the proof. Okay, and let's take a look at um, total number of vertices we could have. So we know we have um, m constraints and we have m unknowns. And among these n unknowns, m of them will be selected as basic variables. So how many combinations we would have? Well, it's this uh, select m out of m, so it's n factorial over 
n factorial and n minus n factorial. Okay, so this is a finite number in particular. It's not a very big number either. Okay, and now we introduce another definition, which um, is um, an edge of your um, convex set. Okay, so an edge is a line connecting two vertices and uh, any point, let's call it x, on an edge can be written as the midpoint of two other points, x tilde and x bar, and it can be written as this only for x tilde and x bar also on the same edge, and that's the definition. So an introduction of an edge will be important in Later, we'll make the connection to the simplex algorithm. Okay, so um, let's see the connection now. This is theorem 11. Um, theorem says two vertices where only one basic variable is changed form an edge. Okay, so basically say they are adjacent, right? If you have two vertices where you switch only one basic variable, so that sentence sounds familiar because in simplex algorithm, we every time we pivot, we switch one basic variable. Okay. So, and then we're basically going along an edge. Okay, let's see how we can prove this. Okay, so we um, follow the definition. So. We consider two basic feasible solutions. We call it um, x bar x tilde. We re reuse these notations in our proofs, and they are different things in different proofs. Okay, so here we have these two, uh, such that x bar is um, a basic feasible solution with uh, x one to x n uh, as basic variables when x tilde is a basic solution with the x2 to xm plus 1 as the basic variables. So you have noticed that the basic variables are switched by 1. Namely, you take out x1 and add xm plus 1 and then you move from x bar to x tilde. Okay, once you have those two points, and let's say I pick an x to be a point on the line segment connecting x bar and x tilde. That is, for some t between 0 and 1, we have x equals a convex combination of x bar and x tilde. And okay, and then since the and set for feasible solutions, the feasible region is convex, then x is also a feasible solution. What form does it take? Well, it will take some form like this. So from x1 to xm plus 1, it will take some value, but what we want to emphasize is from xm plus 2 and on, all these will be zero. And these might, might not be zero. And then we also see that a, any point in this form here uh, would lie on the line segment between x bar and x tilde. So we call this um, form star, and we'll refer back to it as a star. OK, now let's go to the definition of the edge. Now let's assume that x equal a half y bar plus y tilde, where y bar, y tilde are two feasible solutions. Then I can write out the element of x. It will just be half of y bar plus y tilde with the corresponding index in each element of x. Now let's compare this expression of x with the 
x that's concluded here in the star. Okay. In particular, I'm interested in the elements with index bigger than m plus 1, meaning actually it's 0 here. So that then I would know that for i bigger than m plus 1, we would have all these elements 0. So a half of y bar i, y tilde i, add up shall be 0. And I also know the both of these y's are bigger than 0. And then we have seen this argument before. If that is the case, and then you conclude those y bar i, y tilde i, must both be 0. Okay, then what does it mean? That means that if you shall be able to express in this form x as the midpoint between y bar and y tilde, then y bar and y tilde, both of them must have the last um, n minus m minus 1 elements 0, meaning they are both in the form star. Okay, And then they must both be on the segment from x bar to x tilde. Okay, and that's um, precisely the definition of an edge. Okay, therefore we conclude that the two vertices, um, that means the two basic feasible solutions, if you switch only one um, basic variable, they, between them, you can form an edge. Okay? Okay, so this is the final corollary, corollary number 12. And now we go back to the simplex method and then we see what we were doing in the simplex algorithm. So the corollary says, in the algorithm, each pivot moves the basic feasible solution from one vertex along an edge to the next one in the direction of decreasing value of the objective function, okay, for the non-degenerate case. Okay, so now you know what we were doing in the algorithm. Okay, so um, that is all I have to say, and this concludes our study of the convexity, and I'll see you next time.